The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature, to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. 
Then the apostles began to ask one another, which of them it could be who would do this? A dispute also arose among the apostles as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. Jesus said to his apostles, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. Jesus said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, the scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he had reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While Jesus was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around Jesus saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched the slave's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs, as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then the crowd seized Jesus and led him away. The crowd brought Jesus into the high priest's house, but Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing Peter in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing Peter said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also is with the prisoner, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while Peter was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. 
Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on Jesus. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought Jesus to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? Jesus said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse Jesus, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, Pilate sent Jesus off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about Jesus and was hoping to see him perform some sign. Herod questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes stood by vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt and mocked him. Then Herod put an elegant robe on Jesus and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have found not guilt this man of guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, this man has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then the elders all shouted together, Away with this fellow. Release Barabbas for us. Barabbas was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time, Pilate said to them, why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But the elders kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that Jesus should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. Pilate released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, 
for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over Jesus that read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly, this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all Jesus' acquaintances, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Jesus took the body down, wrapped it. Joseph took the body down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. They returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested, according to the commandment. Do you remember the first time that you saw the Wizard of Oz? Have you seen the Wizard of Oz? (laughs) The opening scenes in black and white set the tone and create a palpable cinematic tension when Dorothy is fleeing the oncoming tornado. As we all know, she doesn't make it to the shelter and her house is sucked up by the twister and then it lands in this remarkable, rich, beautiful, technicolor place. The yellow brick road, the ruby slippers, and the emerald city are so richly saturated with color that the change from black and white has startled audiences for generations. Today, we go the other way, in reverse. We go from Oz back to Kansas, from color to black and white, from joy and jubilation to starkness, betrayal, and death. We began today outside in our procession, celebrating Jesus' triumphal entrance to Jerusalem, where crowds welcomed him with excitement. And then our scene turned dark and we faced the trial and denial and torture and crucifixion of our Lord. We just participated in the liturgy, giving our voices to the crowd 
that have now turned against Jesus as we yelled, crucify him, crucify him. We're not in Oz anymore. There was a woman in my former worship community that refused to go to Palm Sunday and Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday services. She said that it broke her heart to say those words, crucify him. She said, I can't do it. I cannot bear the thought of my words being responsible for the death of Jesus. I understand what she said to me because it's hard to even think that I might be responsible for even hurting my Savior. But in reality, I do. Whether I want to admit it or not, we all do. Our human selves fail to love our neighbor and turn the other cheek and be humble and love mercy. And that keeps us in the dark sometimes. But here's the part where we start seeing the technicolor, the beautiful colors peek through. God is walking with us in the darkness, in our darkness, in the pain, and in our suffering while we sin, while we despair. God is there with a hand outstretched, waiting to pull us out of the tomb and into the light. Stepping away from the joyful singing of outside and entering here in silence, reading about Jesus' death feels like we've left the yellow brick road behind and been sucked up into an emotional chaos of Holy Week. The truth is, we can't stop what is coming this week. We can't stop Good Friday that will be even darker. On that day, we will gather to worship with a bare altar, with hymns of loss, with our hearts broken open. But we're not alone in the darkness. As we lean into our soul's lamentation, we feel the stretch of our faiths and the tug at our hearts. And we feel the presence of Christ because we know the certainty and we know the truth. There is glorious resurrection ahead, even as we journey with our Savior through the sacred light. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, Justice and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Phoebe, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. for the special needs of this congregation. We pray for those on our parish prayer list, Marilyn, Brooke, Robbie, Abigail, Gloria, Nathaniel, Ronnie, Tom, Bonnie, David, Philip, Dave, Stephanie, Gary, Daniel, Alan, Jason, Mark, Crystal, JD, Carol, Mike, 
Jan, Michael, Beverly, Sandy, Stephen, Jean, Scotty, Kenneth, Gina, Manon family. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Harrison Marshall, Abigail Bucco, Debbie Tankersley, Andrea Sedlicek, Kelly Pointer, Andy Hines, Ben Garrett, Billy Gates, Lydell Turner, Kate Dukes, Margaret Darby, Blake Schofield, Alex McCarty, Jennifer Henson and Dave Whitehead. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. It's good to see you all here today. Welcome to visitors. Happy birthday. Welcome to the Manon family who's here with us today. If you recognize somebody you don't know, go, go up and introduce yourself to them. Got some good folks here today. I encourage you after the service is over to please um, stay in here because we're going to start in here on our Eucharistic Mystery Tour. And we'll divide, we'll start here, we'll split up into groups, and then we'll go change classes in different places. We'll, one place will be here, the sacristy, my office, and in the choir room. And then we'll all come back in here uh, for the last piece of it, and then we'll all get to go to the reception and eat the yummy food. But you have to do the Eucharistic Mystery Tour first. Um, today we are passing plates, so I see the little tray, so we'll see how this goes, but you know, we haven't done it in a long time, so it's a first. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper... He took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family from whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.